Hello, everyone. I'm Mr. C, and this is Mrs. C, and today we have something different for you. Yes, Let's you're not here with us, so um, we we just want to do a different day, all right? So we'll start with a song. Do you know about Jesus? And this one, you know, to the tune of "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." Okay, so here we go. Do you know about Jesus? He can save you from sin. He died for sinners on Calvary. He's alive now to set people free. And someday you'll go to be with him if he has saved you from sin. So it's one, dirt, full to be sure he will come again. Do you know about Jesus? He's my savior and friend. He never leaves me, he's always there. Loving me, helping me, answering prayer, even when I face many trials. On him I'll always depend. For it's wonderful to know Jesus, my savior, friend. We brought some funny faces with us today. Maybe you've been on these, seen these on your phone or your device. You can push a button and you have your choice of what emoji you want. I looked up choice in a dictionary and it means a power or opportunity to choose. I also looked up the word choice in our King James Bible and it means the best. So how do we react to all this happening around here? We have a choice. Maybe we're confused. Confused at what's going on. The world's crazy. What have you heard? The news is all about the coronavirus 19. So what are we going to do about it? You have news reports and all of them are different. Some are good, some are bad. So we're confused. Some of us are just plain angry. We're angry because we're locked up in a house. We can't go see our friends. We can't do things we normally do. We can't go to school. And then others are sad. We can't, we're stuck at home. We got, still got to do our homework. Can't even get out of that. It's no fun. It's my birthday's coming up and I can't have a party and lots of people are sick. It just makes me plain sad then others are just plain scared. How long will this go on? Is it forever? How many people are going to die? What can we do about it? Dad doesn't have a job. We can't pay our bills. So what are we going to do? Well, God's word has the answer. This might be some of the feelings you're having. What is your choice? You want to be confused? Angry? Mad, scared, or rely on God. We can allow our feelings to control us, but we can choose to ask God to help us to trust Him and use this time to pray for others. Let's take a look at God's Word. He made a record for us in the Bible. And in 1 John 5.11, we have a verse. Watch the screen as I read and make sure I'm reading the same thing that's printing on the screen. And this is the record that God had given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. This is the record. It's God's word here in the Bible. God never lies. He has given us a record. He has given us eternal life. Life that is forever. And that life is through his son. So, do we want to choose to be confused, sad, angry, and scared? Or do we want to believe God's record? He has given us eternal life through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen carefully today as Mrs. C shares with you about one who was different. Sometimes you like to pretend 
I know all of us like to pretend, even Mr. C likes to pretend. Maybe you like to pretend you're a superhero, or maybe you like to pretend that um, you're a fireman, or a nurse, or maybe even you like to pray, pretend that you're a sports figure. Well, pretending is fun, but today we're learning about someone, and when we talk about him, it is not pretend. In fact, the Lord Jesus is God's own son. And Jesus is not like you or like me. He's different from anyone else. And so when we think about that and we learn from the Bible of how Jesus is the one who was different. Today, as we look into God's word, as Mr. C said, we're going to look at some special passages of scripture in the Gospels that tell us about Jesus and how he was different. First of all, we want to think about how his birth was different. Blank screen. You don't see anything but a big brown mark. But we're going to add figures to it. So as we think about that, his birth was different. I imagine if we were together, you could tell me, oh, I know that. It's the Christmas story. That's true. But how was Jesus different? How was his birth different? Well, as we think about that and we read it from the word, we can read it in Matthew or we can read it in Luke. That's Mr. C in my favorite passage, reading it in Luke. But I want to read for you out of John. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. John tells us that he is the word. It tells us that he is the beginning, and it tells us that he is the creator. As we think about that, this whole Bible, all the Old Testament gave us lots of prophecies about Jesus. And the wonderful thing is, they're all true. Every single one of them, and they actually happened. Jesus' birth was different. So we think about the angel Gabriel coming to Mary, and you can imagine with me, she was probably scared. But then, Jesus, or the angel gave her an announcement said, you will have a son. He will be called the son of the highest. And then he appeared to Joseph in a dream. And as he appeared to Joseph, again said the same thing. The Bible says that he said, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Can you imagine what it was like out on the field after Jesus really was born? that all the shepherds, they saw that angel, and they saw multitude of angels. I imagine they were afraid. Maybe they were confused. Maybe they were scared. But they were also excited. They wanted to go see what had happened. His birth was different. And you know, after they saw, imagine with me that Mary is holding the Lord Jesus in her arms. And the shepherds came. And then, you know what they did? They had a choice. The Bible tells us that they went out to tell everybody that they met what they had seen and what they had heard. Wow! Jesus' birth was different. But not only was Jesus' birth different, his life was different. We can read about that in the book of in the Bible as well. So many things in the Gospels tell us about Jesus. And right now, Mr. C and I are reading through the book of Luke just to prepare our hearts about it. But one of the greatest things that makes Jesus different is that Jesus never sinned. He never told a lie. He never got angry. He never, ever disobeyed his parents. He always always did what was right. How do I know that? Because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew 
no sin. Jesus knew no sin. He never sinned. Always was right. Contrast to that to our lives. Do you always make good choices? Do you always do what's right? Do you always do what your mom and dad want you to do? Well, James 4.17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. When we know what to do and we don't do it, that's sin. And when we do what we know we're not supposed to do, that's sin. And the punishment for sin is to be separated from God forever. Did anybody ever have to teach you to tell a lie? Did anybody have to tell you, okay, this is how you have mean thoughts. Do you take that class in school? Nope, not at all. God's word tells us that you and I are sinners. And the punishment for sin is to be separated from God forever. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it says the wages of sin is death. That's pretty terrible. But God loves you. God loves you and made a way for your sin and my sin to be forgiven and the sins of the whole world. How? Why? Because his power was different. In Matthew and Mark and in John, we read some other things about the Lord Jesus. In this, it tells us about how he grew up in Nazareth and when he was 30 years old he began teaching and doing miracles all over. He was baptized, he was out in the desert being um, tempted by the devil and then as he did these miracles sometimes he just had to get away and Jesus told his disciples to get in a boat and I imagine for myself that some of those disciples who were fishermen, they went, Shoo, we get to go out into the boat. And so as he thought about that, he got, they got in the boat. They're sailing across the Sea of Galilee. Jesus left the disciples and went up in a mountain to pray. He often did that. He got away to pray. The sun started to go down. The clouds began to roll in, and a storm came up. And as that storm came up, boys and girls, I can imagine that some of the disciples were afraid. Maybe you're afraid at times, too. And then, this is what we read. The Bible tells us in the book of John, I'm sorry, in the book of Mark, and when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone was on the land. That was Jesus. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them walking upon the sea. Jesus was walking on the water, and he would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And he went up into them, into the ship. The wind ceased. And they, that's the disciples, were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure. And they wondered, what kind of a miracle was this? Jesus' power was different. How did he know where the disciples were? He's omniscient. He knows everything. How could the wind cease? How could he walk on water? Because his power is different. He is omnipotent. The disciples were astonished. Jesus was different. How could he do this? Jesus is God the Son. His power is different. His knowledge is different. But his love for you never, ever changes. He loves you, and he knows all about you. But in another part of the Gospels, we read about a gift that was different. This gift is um, 
about a 12-year-old girl. We don't know her name. doesn't tell us. It just tells us that she was sick. Maybe she had a headache. Or maybe her stomach was upset. We don't know what happened, but it says she was sick. Can you imagine what her mother did? Her mother came to her and um, maybe put her to bed. Her mom was worried. Her dad was worried. But she kept getting sicker and sicker and weaker and weaker. She was going to die. There was nothing the family could do. The Bible tells us the father heard about Jesus. And so he went to where Jesus was. And in Matthew chapter 9 we read, While he spake these things, that means he was teaching people, a certain ruler came to him and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is sick, even now unto death. But come, lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And then when Jesus came into the ruler's house, saw the minstrels and the people, they were making a noise because the girl had died. Jesus said, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And then Jesus did. Amazing thing. Jesus touched the girl and she came alive. She came alive. The girl who was dead, he gave her the greatest gift. He healed her and he gave her life. And that gift of life is something for you to have as well. The gift of life. There was a different way. A different way, even after this, to solve a major, major problem. Wherever Jesus went, people followed him. Hundreds of people. Thousands of people. And Jesus would teach, and they would listen, and they would see. They heard. Sometimes it made a difference in their life. When this particular time, on a special day, they had been there all day long. All day. And then the Bible says that towards evening, Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, give them to eat. Confused, kind of scared, not knowing what to do. The disciple says, um, how can we give him something to eat? We only have just a little bit of food, money. One of the disciples, Andrew, in another part of the Bible, we read that he found a young lad. And the lad had a lunch. He had a choice. I, he'd been there all day, maybe two. And he could eat the lunch himself, or the Bible says he gave it to Jesus. As he gave it, Jesus knew what he was going to do. Remember, he's omniscient, and he's all-powerful. And so he took that little lad's lunch, and he had the disciples gather the people into smaller groups. And then he took that bread and he lifted it up and he asked the Father. He blessed it. And as he blessed that bread, then the Bible says he distributed out. And the disciples took and gave it to all of the people. Listen to what it says right here. And it says in um, verse 32, here it is. And the people saw him, many knew him, ran afoot, followed him out there. And then when they were all together, he said, give ye them to eat. And then when they sat down, verse 41 says, and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up into heaven, blessed and break the loaves, gave them to the disciples to set before them, and the two fishes divided he among they all. And they all did eat and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments of the fishes. And they that ate were five thousand men, the Bible says. There are probably wives there, and aunts and uncles, and children, more than that. But Jesus did a miracle. 
his did had a solution to a different problem. But that wasn't all. Jesus did miracles. Jesus healed people. Jesus fed people. But the greatest thing that Jesus came for was his death was different. Jesus came to die for our sins. His death was different. He who never did anything wrong while he was on his earth, he was nailed to a cross in between two criminals. The Bible says a crown of thorns was placed on his head. Nails were put in his hands and in his feet, and blood came out. The prophet Isaiah, in chapter 53 of Isaiah, he tells us some things about this time. And he says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Unrecognizable. Why did he do it? Do you know that even the worst thing that was happening at this time was that Jesus was taking our sins, your sins and mine, upon himself, the sins of the whole world. Jesus cried out, It is finished. What was finished? Hebrews tells us, and without shedding, without the giving of blood, is no remission, is no forgiveness. Jesus gave his blood so that you and I could be forgiven of our sins. How do we know that's true? Because in, in 1 Corinthians it tells us Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus did that for you. And he did that for me. He took the punishment. It's finished. The punishment for our sins was taken care of. One soldier said, truly this was the Son of God. Truly this was the Son of God. Can you imagine? When they buried him in that tomb and they set soldiers there, they sealed it, the leaders thought, the end. We don't have to deal with him any longer. But Jesus rose again. He's alive. And because he is alive, you and I can have his new life too. He was different because he's risen from the grave. Sin's punishment was paid. Mary and other women went to the tomb they saw that it was empty. John and Peter ran to the tomb. They saw that it was empty. Jesus appeared to the disciples. They saw him alive. And scripture tells us that he was seen by 500 men. Jesus is alive. And now, before Jesus di even died, he told his disciples what was going to happen. He knew that they would be confused. He knew that they would be scared. He knew they even would be sad. But listen to what he said. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye, you may be also. But then one of the disciples said, we don't know the way. But Jesus told us, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Jesus can make your life different. Because he is the one who was different. He is the way, the only way to heaven. He is the truth. And he tells us the truth in this true book. And he is the life. The Bible tells us in John 
chapter 1, verse 12. It tells us this, But as many as received him, you have a choice. To receive him means that you take Jesus as your own. To them, to you, gave he the power. That's the right to become a son, a child of God, even to them that believe on his name. Believe means you put your trust in what Jesus did for you. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, and you believe that he died and came alive again, and today you want to receive him as your Savior from sin, you can do that. We've already told you out of the word what it is. You have questions. You can talk to your mom or your dad. Or you can call our church and talk to pastor. Or you can even text Mr. C and I to find out how you can know for sure that your sins are forgiven. But maybe you're saying, I knew all of those things. I've already trusted the Lord Jesus as my Savior. Then you already know it, that you're on your way to heaven. But right now, you make choices every single day. Maybe your choice is to read God's word. Maybe your choice is to sing songs and to pray for people that are sick and pray for our, our workers, our people that are working in the hospitals with sick people. But as you make those choices, will you think, Lord, I want to be different. I want to live for you. And as you make those choices every single day, then God, Jesus, will help you do it. Why? Because he knows you, all about you. And he is all powerful. He can help you. Hebrews says, in chapter 13, it says that I will never leave you. That's Jesus. And then it says, the Lord is my helper. He's your helper and mine to help us to make choices that are right. Today, would you believe what God is telling you to do? Faith is just believing what God says he will do. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will never fail us. His promises are true. If we but receive him, his children we become. Faith is just believing this wondrous thing is done. Faith is just believing God's true word. Thanks, boys and girls, for being with us today. We'll see you next week.